So the stock market has been able to pull off another major feat. Um, it's, it's so incredible. I mean, I've been at this 45 years. Uh, and uh, I, there's hardly a time I remember when markets went into declines uh, that were corrective periods that were timely. And then they reversed so fast that you almost don't even get to take a profit because if you're on the short side, the buyers just come back and they drive them up so fast. And uh, often, you know, I'll be looking for a market to move down in a corrective time frame and expect a bounce, but then expect that it will, you know, complete the decline in the manner that would be normal rhythms. And it doesn't, it just turns straight up and uh, the profits are instantly gone. Uh, and then you're scrambling to say, okay, where are we now? And that's what I do. I'm really flexible and I look at the patterns and I say, okay, that's where we were and this is where we are. So I'm looking forward in order to see what the next opportunity is rather than looking back and saying, okay, you messed this up or you didn't make as much as you could have made or any of that or you lost money. It's not about that. It's about you know managing your capital and then um, looking forward and saying, okay, I'm ready for the next trade uh, and I'm going to evaluate the market the best that I can based on where it is, not based on what I hope. So uh, that's a, a good lesson for you and a good lesson that I learn over and over again. Look at that rebound right in there. So <clears throat> the question is, you know, I said that the S&Ps would fall over 100 points, maybe as much as 175. So they fell uh, about 116 points. That isn't much when you look at that. And time frame wise, these patterns right in here are suggestive of the fact that this low is too soon. So I had believed that the, the, when, the, when the first low was made, it would get a rebound and then fall very hard and get to lower prices. Our target was 3150. You'll notice right now the target moves up to this support right over here about I don't know, 32 and a quarter uh, because, because of this upward movement right over here. And when I show you on the daily chart, you'll see how that, uh, how that shapes up. So this big gain is what I'm talking about, the instant uh, recovery that the market's been able to put on. Uh, there's about a 10 or 15% probability that this ends the whole correction and more like about an 80%, 80, 85% probability that there is another leg to that correction. But now it only looks like it would be a test of uh, this low right over here. And you can see we still have that decline in here, but we're looking at what would be perfect. If you see that, <clears throat> doesn't have to be perfect. And we're always giving probabilities. Now, uh, as the, the, the longer you stay up and the higher you move up in here, if you get past these, you know, Fibonacci extensions there in these next couple of weeks, that, that then it's going to raise the odds that this was the important corrective low. And we're in some new move in there that I have no idea where it's going to. So right now you can see we maintain the patterns that we had. We sim and the timing remains the same. It's just that the price changes because of the magnitude of the upside move. So that's what we have right in here. And, you know, it's, I'm pretty mechanical when it comes to this stuff. It's just, you know, what, what, is, what are the patterns telling me and what are they telling me now uh, as, as things change? So you can see in here, one, two, three days, that is very, very clear that this upward phase has begun. Now, why is this dotted? It's dotted because I have a node in here, uh, because I want our users to realize that, you know, there's, there's a shift in here, a change. And these cycles right over here, this important low to this low, this one was 22 days. You can see the 22. This one was 20 days. And this one was about uh, 20 or 21 days. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that, that shows you that there's just this minor fluctuation going on between these rhythms that are very, very similar in length. Now, this is weird because you see we lost upward momentum. It never went negative. The market condition indicator always stayed at P3, the most positive. And the and then it turned back to positive right over here. So this was kind of a little chop. Usually when you get into chop, you remain in chop. In other words, that this minor upward turn in momentum won't last long and you'll get back into another choppy condition. 
what we really think is the highest probability is that these fib extensions right over here 3350 this one right up over here 3363 those are in reach but we don't think that this is a lot more than that as you can see our projections in here and that this declining phase in here gets you right back down to that level again we were looking at this support level here around 3150 3152 before and that is still reachable in this declining period over here it won't be reachable if this gets up into those fib extension zones up over there it will look different to us so um, that's how we maneuver this um, right now it still has a character in these uh, patterns that calls for a peaking sometime uh, in, the, in the number of days. When we look at the bond market, which said maybe four or five days, then maybe this has this four or five days on the upside. So we kind of use the bond market to help us with the length of this uh, advance in here, but we think it will not be able to make a lot more upside progress in there. And if there, anything, there's, you know, uh, the, the risk to the upside is, is again, probably less than 1%. The risk to the downside is that same 100 points that we've been talking about. So um, that's only 3%. So right now we give it about 3 to 1 risk reward to the downside uh, when we look at this as far as uh, the, the, the number of points in either direction. So that's a look at the S&P 500.